we're driving, we have stop signs and you know, you have your stop light and you're driving and you're like, okay, I need to go right, okay, I need to go left. Hmm. When I was younger, someone told me that there were even roads in the sky. So maybe there are roads in the sky. Well, I've never been a pilot, but <laughs> I'm sure that when I was up there, I never see a stop sign. But you know, let's look at this, let's look at this. What about on the sea where we have some boats, we have ships, you know, are there stop signs there? You have a stoplight. What's going on there? Well, guess what? You see for the ships now or, or the boats, I don't think there are any stop signs. And clearly we can't have roads on the sea. Hmm, I've never seen any, you know, I'm wondering. But guess what? I remember something. I remember I have this fisher, fisherman, he's, um, he's good. Mm -hmm. I remember one day he said he was lost at sea mm -hmm. and he used something called a compass I'm, I'm remembering now. So he used the compass to figure out where he is and where he needed to go. So maybe the compass have something to do with it, you know? I think the coffee's starting to kick in now. Yes, girl. Yeah. So it's definitely a compass that they're using to help to navigate the sky and the sea. Oh, yeah, yes. you're right, you know? And also the compass, I believe there are some measures on it. Yes. Which is how the bearings come in. Exactly how they come in. So now we're figuring out what exactly is bearing so we can just put it together now. Yeah, let's talk about it. So a bearing is actually an angular measure clockwise from a north or northern direction. Okay, hold on. We want them to actually have the visual represent. So I'm going to sketch. All right. So you're thing. saying we have a north you have a north line. So here I'm representing my north line. We have a point of reference to start. All right, so we have our north line. Mm -hmm. And you said to us earlier, we go clockwise direction. Now when I'm thinking about the clock and going clockwise, I am going in this direction. So my clockwise direction would be this way so it would start from my reference point where my north is my north pole is right here mm -hmm. and then i would go in a clockwise direction suppose it is that you know for our listeners on the radio suppose we want to tell them about what's happening with the clock explain how we'd move clockwise yes with clock. so for our listeners on the radio mm -hmm. if we're going to do a clockwise direction just as how you have 12 and then after 12 you have one two three four and the hands of the clock go that direction you know you move 12 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 that would be the clockwise direction awesome so you're going to then now move from the north right to the right so you're going to the right now to arrive at your clockwise direction good bearings also uses three digits so normally when we're looking at a bearing we're starting off at north which would be something like zero 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 degrees so it's always represented with three digits oh i see i see i get it and guess what oh there's our compass there's our compass so if you if we're looking at the compass tell me what you see Camille. Well, based on what you said just now, mm -hmm. we have three digits, which gives us our bearings. So now we can link it back to bearings. So here we have our compass, which we spoke about earlier. And it's not the compass that you used to draw circles in, in school. And you, you, you know, no. you're constructing, it's not that compass, you know. No, it's not So it's not, not that a one. compass. This now is a tool. So that compass that we may have thought about, or some students may be thinking about, it's not that one that you used to construct circles. This compass is different it gets a tool and it gives us measurements and it also has some cardinality so we have the four main cardinal points north south east and west right, right. so we're seeing that north east south west all right and we are also seeing our three figures or three dig digits on the outside of our compass all right now there's some other points that we'd like to mention to you so we Although we have the four main cardinal points, in between these points, halfway through, we have what is known as half cardinal points. And that's northeast, 0, 0.45 degrees, southeast, 135 degrees, southwest, 225 degrees, and northwest, 315 degrees. 
you know what's good too mm -hmm. it's good that the northeast which is our 045 degrees it's basically halfway so it is exactly halfway between north, north and, and east. east right and then our southeast now which is 135 degrees is exactly halfway between our east and our south right there and then our southwest which is 225 degrees is halfway between south and west and our northwest which is 315 degrees is halfway between our north and our west so this is good this is very good but you know what i'm looking at too right here if we link it back to angles we're realizing that our northeast here is less than 90 degrees so if it's, it's less true. than 90 degrees, it's going to be a, um, what they call it again? It starts with an A. What type of angle is that one again? Mm, it's an acute angle. Yes, it's an acute angle. And right here now, we have 135 degrees, which we know that can be an acute angle. And it's definitely mm. not a right angle because a right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. So it's more than our 90 degrees, which gives us our obtuse angle. And right here where we have salt, it's exactly 180 degrees, which links us to our straight, straight angle. angle, right? So we have already started looking at our bearings to really know what it is. We said that it's a three digit figure. And we also recognize that we have a north and we go in a clockwise direction. More on schools not out after the break. We'll be right back guys. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC math. We're talking about bearings, so let's get back to our lesson. So before the break, we looked at a scenario where we had planes in the sky and boats on the ocean. Yes. We talked about how we use a special tool called a compass to find our way around the sea and around the skies. Now, why do you think we would have needed to have bearings. What do you think was happening? Now, one of the things that we thought about is that sailors probably had a difficulty communicating their location, right? So you over there, so you over here, so turn left, turn right. What does that mean? That has no meaning. So they needed one fixed way to be able to navigate and give directions, right? So one way they came, they came up with to solve the issue was to measure all angles from a north line going clockwise. Wise direction, great. And we would have said earlier before we went to the break that bearings is a three-digit number. All right? Yes. All right. So here, activity time, guys. Activity time. Woo all right. <laughs> all right. So so here we're looking at a map of Jamaica. So can you see the map? Yes, I'm seeing the map. All right. Now, can we identify cardinal directions of a few parishes in relation to Kingston? So we're measuring cardinality or we're looking at cardinality from Kingston. So let's start off. If I'm in Kingston and I wanted to find out the direction of St. Thomas, for example, where would St. Thomas be? Well, based on the map of Jamaica, now that we're looking at mm -hmm. my reference point, since I would be coming from Kingston and I would be going to St. Thomas, mm -hmm. that means I would be going east. So if I am leaving Saint, if I'm leaving Kingston to St. Thomas, I would be going east. All right. Right. So here I would have my north line and there I would be going east. So I'm traveling clockwise. Great. And we're going clockwise and we're going east. east. You notice what type of angle is formed there? Right angle. There right go. angle Perfect. is formed right there. All right. How about St. Catherine? All right. So if I am at St. Catherine and I need to go, well, not St. Catherine, we need to ensure that we remember where we're coming from. So now we're in Kingston. So I'm coming from Kingston mm -hmm. and I'm going to St. Catherine. So which direction? would i go that means i would go west so i am starting at kingston but i would go in a west direction all right so good how about saint mary that one is easy easy because if i am at kingston well right now i'm in kingston and i'm going 
to St. Mary and I would love to go to St. Mary right now, I know I would be going north. So it is directly going north based on where I am right now in Kingston. No, you know, I think you've done this before, don't you? No, but you no, know, I, you I think it's all them right. No, man, I love the direction. I love doing directions. I love doing directions. All right. So now let's let me give let me test out your skills. Right. So COVID Brown mm -hmm. went to visit her aunt in Portland Cottage, Clarendon. That's right. where I'm from, Clarendon. So COVID was at the river. You know, we like go to the river in Jamaica. Yeah. So COVID went to the river and she was given a map to help her to find her way back to her aunt's house. So she was told that C, which is the point here, rep on the map represented the river and we want to help COVID get back home. So what bearing should she travel from C to E to get back to her aunt's house? Hmm. Let's test your skills now. All right. So now we're going back to what we said bearings is. Mm -hmm. So going back to what we said bearings is, we know that the first thing we have to do is have our, we are going to establish our north. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So we know we're coming from C. So COVID here is coming from C. So we are establishing our north. The next thing that we are remembering too is that we're going in a clockwise direction. So remember now, we're going in a clockwise direction. So in a clockwise direction, we are starting right at C and oh, we have already established our north. So we are now moving from north, going to east. We realize that your on source is not east. We're going to south. We realize that your on source is not. Uh, well, oh yes, guess what? No, so it's not at east. So now we're at South, but when we look, we realize that E is somewhere on South is somewhere between East and South. So now we are trying to look at where exactly it is. So we know that it is somewhere between East and South. So it must be between our 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And here we have it. So here we are looking at our protractor. So we're looking at our protractor, we're using our protractor here to measure exa the exact bearing of our aunt's house. And here we're seeing it, great, Brittany is helping us. And we have arrived at 135 degrees. So that is the bearing from C, which is where the river was, to our aunt's house at E. So Brittany, tell me if I get it. Tell me if I missed out anything. Help me out, help me. Tell me if I get it or if I missed out anything whatsoever. So, let me ask you a question. You're saying to me that when we're looking at maps, instead of using our compass in math, we use a protractor? Well, based on what we're doing here, yes. So yes, we're going, if we're on the boat, we're going to be using our tool as the compass right there to give us the direction. But when we're now getting the exact location and the measure here, which is our bearing, of one place to the next we are using our protractor here okay good awesome so you did a good job with this and indeed she would travel 135 degrees from the river back to her aunt's house so, so you help her covid a lot yeah, this morning yeah she found her aunt's house she found her aunt's house but guess what you put me on the spot so it's your turn now and guess what we're going to be looking at we're going to look at a CSEC question. So we're going to look at a CSEC question first. So bam, we're looking at question one and here goes. All right, bring it on. No problem. <laughs> the diagram shows the position of two hurricane tracking stations, P and Q relative to a point O. P is on a bearing of 0 0.25 degrees from O and OP measures 400 kilometers. Q is on a bearing of 0, 080 degrees from P and PQ measures 700 kilometers. So guess what your question is now? Mm -hmm. There's your question. So on the diagram, you are going to label the angles that show the bearings of 0, 025 degrees and 0, 080 degrees. By the way, you remember why we have 0, 025 degrees and 0, 080 degrees? 
I thought it was a challenge. Bearings uses three digits. Oh, great, great, great. So we're on task, we're on task, great. So your turn now, you're going to be labeling it for us now. Okay. All right, so you said that we are using O as our reference point, right? Yes. And P, P is on a bearing relative is on a bearing of 0 25 degrees yes so i'm at o and it means that here we go we've established our north line we're going to be measuring 0 25 degrees from o to p which would be here great i would good. then need to okay and then you would label our angle 0 great. 25 degrees good job good job so you got the first one right let's see if you're going to figure out the second one now Girl, this is easy. What do you mean? May I watch so you? No. So now we're measuring a bearing from P to Q. So we're measuring from P to Q. Again, we have our north line. So we're measuring 0, 80 degrees from P to Q. So it would be from our north line here what to point what, Hold on. What direction are we supposed to go in again? Which way? I'm, and I'm moving in a clockwise Great. direction. Great, so we're going in a clockwise direction. Great, which gives us here. So this is just helping us here what Brittany is showing. So here, from P to Q here, we have 0, 80 degrees. All right, cool, cool. I give it to you. You know, in normal times, I'd pop, you'd pop my color because I wouldn't have to pop it. You'd I pop give it, it to you. I give it All to right. you. I, I give you this round. I give you this round. But we're going to do our next question. But guess what? Guess what's up with the next question now? What's up? You're going to have to help me. Hmm. So we're going to do it 50-50. Hmm. All right, so let's try this one. And this one is another CSA question. But this one is fun, fun, fun. This one never fun a while ago. You know, this one will be fun. OK, so. Let me tell you what we're going to do. A man walks X kilometers due north from point G to point H. All right. So guess what we're going to do now? I am going to represent it as you speak. So let's go. So he's traveling from where? A point G to a point H due north. So X he's kilometers. traveling from G and he's going north. So I'm doing a sketch of what Brittany is saying. So do you know it? And he stops where? At a point H. H, all right. So we know that right here, Brittany just told us we are going north, all right. So I reach H. What next am I supposed to do now? And they also told us that he walked X kilometers. So as we go along, we, we need to label that. All right, distance. so let, let's label it, let's label it. So it's X kilometers, all right. All right. No, he then walks X plus seven kilometers due east from point H to point F. All right, so I'm starting now at H. Yes. And I'm going east. Due east to a so point I'm going F. East. So there I have it. East to a point F. And the distance he traveled was X plus seven kilometers. All right, so it's X plus seven kilometers from H to F, okay? All right, the distance along a straight line from G to F is 13 kilometers. So all we're going to do now is connect both points. Point G and point F. Great, so we are connecting point G to point F. And this measures 13 kilometers. All right. This measures 13 kilometers. So there we have it. We started at point G, we stopped at point H, and then he traveled to point F, X plus seven kilometers more. And then we're also told that the distance between G, point G, and point F gives us 13 kilometers. So whoopee. I got it. That's Good correct. Job. That's correct. Great. All right. So now we're asked to write an equation in X which satisfies Pythagoras' theorem. Lord God, Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem. Why are they asking us about Pythagoras' theorem again? Why? You know, though, but when I look at the triangle here that we have, we are realizing right here that Right at point H, 
So for our persons who are listening on the radio at point H, we are establishing that that's a right angle, which means it fits a right angle, it measures exactly 90 degrees. Now they're asking us to write an equation that satisfies Pythagoras' theorem. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm young, when I was much younger, I remember in school they said that as long as you're using Pythagoras' theorem, it must be with a right angle triangle. So right here we know it's going to be a right angle triangle. Okay. No, but that that's... Okay, what's Pythagoras' theorem? What's that? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need to bail me out now. Me? I, I, I young, but I'm not so young. Remember I said when I was younger? So bail me out now. Oh, gosh. Look how you put me on the spot. <laughs> Why are you doing that to me? Well, I think... Hmm. Become I'm really so young myself. But I think that Pythagoras' theorem looks at the relationship between the sides in a right angle triangle. So I think I heard that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the square of the other lengths of the triangle? Yes! You, you never hear. You never hear. You know. Trust me, you're right. You're right on spot. That is indeed correct. So here we have the square of our other length. So we have x square. Remember now, x kilometers would have been the length from G to H. Plus, our next length would have given us x plus 7, which is all squared, which now gives us our hypotenuse square, which oh. is our 13 square. But well, let me ask you a question. How you know that that is the hypotenuse? How I know this is the hypotenuse? Mm -hmm. Because we already know from long time that the hypotenuse is the longest length, the longest side of the triangle. So the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle. Okay. All right. So here we have, we have something looking like, hmm, an equation so far, we have something, so now we need to simplify it. What did they tell us that we need to bring it to? x squared plus 7x minus 60. All right, mm -hmm. no problem. That's a challenge. No problem, man. I got it. I got it. So let's All go. Right, so right here now, first, before I even move on, we're recognizing here that we have, let me use a different color for the persons who are watching. So right here, we have x plus 7 all square. So we have x plus 7 all square. All right. So watch me now and watch me carefully. So here we have x square plus. So now we need to figure out what is x plus 7 all square. I don't know if you remember when we used to go to school and we learned it. So we are expanding. Right. So x plus 7 all square means that it's x plus 7 in one bracket, x plus seven in the next bracket. Simple like ABC, <laughs> right? And we're expanding. Okay. So right here in our expanding now, we're using our first term in our first bracket, which is x. So we have x and we're now using our second bracket. So here we go. So we're just expanding. Okay which now gives us our x times our x gives us x squared. x squared, great. Our x times our seven gives us? Seven x. Great. And our plus. seven, right, so now we know that is plus. Seven. seven times our x gives us? Seven x. All right, and our seven times our seven gives us? 49. Great, 49. So all we now need to do is simplify it. So here we have how many x squared terms we have? Only one. Great. So we're writing it back down. We only have one, so we have x squared. Now, 7 plus 7x plus 7x gives us what? Mm, 14x. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You don't have 14 fingers. So it's 14x plus 49. Very good. Right. So all we're going to be doing here now is x squared plus over 14x plus 49 equals our 3. 13 square and all we need to do is simplify so how many x square terms we have two great so we have x square plus x square gives us 2x two two x, x square 
plus our 14x plus 49 gives us 13 squared is what again? 13 times 13 gives one us what? 169. No man, what 169. All right. Oh. So it's 169. All right, <laughs> great. But when we're looking at what you have there, Hmm, we need to simplify it a little bit further because you have x squared plus 7x minus 60. So we need to simplify it a little bit further. So let's see now. Let's see. So we, we now have to balance our equation because we have to go try figure out what we're doing. All right. So we have 2x squared plus 14x plus 49. But guess what? No. When we look on the right hand side of the equation, we recognize that we have 169. So we have to balance the equation. So we're going to be subtracting 169 from both sides of the equation. But why you have to do that? What do you mean why I have to do that? It Don't can't unbalance. No, an equation cannot be unbalanced. Okay. Remember, you know, an equation, you have to balance the scale. You balance the equation, man. One side, the left hand side, must be equal to the right hand side. So let's go. So here now we have 2x squared plus 14x. And now we have 49 minus 169, which gives us minus 60. And we have 169 minus 169, which leaves us with zero. No teacher. Well, the maths. Nice. You so know I, I do the maths. I'm gl glad you see it. I'm glad you see it. So you're paying attention. So what I supposed to have right here, so? I Tell think, me you now. know, 49 from 116. 169 is 120. Well, on. I do the subtraction. No, miss. Really? I could do the subtraction. So here we have 9 from 9 gives us what? Zero. Zero. Four from six gives us two. And we have one left. Uh, so you're paying attention, you know. I Who can't said believe you're not paying? Me. No, it's not that kind of a doubt you man. I wanted to ensure that you're paying attention. So we're on target. We're on. All right, but guess what? No, your equation there says x squared plus seven x minus sixty. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So we now need to do something with two x squared plus fourteen x. Minus 120 equals zero to arrive at that equation. Mm -hmm. Simple, simply, now guess what? We're just looking at all these numbers now. So we're looking at the coefficient right there of mm -hmm. x squares 2. When we look at 14x, the coefficient right there is 14. And our constant there is 120. Hmm. The highest common factor now of all these three numbers is 2. So all we need to do is divide all or each term by two. So our two x divided by, two x squared, sorry, divided by two, leaves us with x squared. Plus our 14 x divided by two, leaves us with seven x. And right here now we have our 120 divided by two, gives us 60. 60. Equal, zero divided by two is undefined, so we know it's Zero. Bam, tell me if I get it. Tell me if I get it. You do a thing, one you man do a go thing, through, you go do through, a go thing. through, go through, one if I get it, go through, man, go through. You got it. No, man, I want to see what you did because I know you worked it out to one, man. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. We kind of look like we're on the same path-ish. Right, so we, we're getting we it, we're there. getting it. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting it. Kudos, kudos, we get it, we get it. No. After that, we're asked to now solve the equation to find the distance of GH. All right. So we're asked to solve the equation, which is our x squared plus 7x minus 60. So we're asked to solve this equation. Hmm. To find the distance of GH. So hmm. from that, we know that we want to find, we're solving for x. All right, so we're solving for x. Hmm. Um, what they call this type of equation again? What they call this type of equation again? It starts with a q, man. A q, a, square term. a q, a q. Yeah, man. Quadratic equation. Great, so we call it a quadratic equation. Great. Mm -hmm. So now we have a quadratic equation. Hmm. Let's, let's see if we can help ourselves out. So the coefficient of a, let me use our black marker here, would be what? 
One. Um, I think it's one. Right. Our coefficient of B here would give us? Seven. And our constant is? Negative 60. Great. So we're on the right ball already. We're on the right ball. Now, what do you think we're going to do next? Mm, factor? Yeah, we need to find some factor. We need to factorize it. Yeah, mm, but... How you do that? that that's what, that, same thing I'm here looking at. So now we realize that... All right, our coefficient of x squared is 1. And our constant there is negative 60. Mm -hmm. So now 1 times negative 60 gives us negative 60. So we need to know... So let me write what I'm saying. I think so. So it's a times c which is 1 times negative 60 gives us negative 60. Yes. Right. Yes. Good. Yes. So now we need to find two factors that when we work out, we look at the two factors, mm -hmm. we multiply them, we arrive at negative 60. But when we look at our b term, we are seeing positive 7. So you can think of two factors, two factors of negative 60 that when i multiply them i get negative 60 great. but when i add them i get seven yes great um i'm thinking about maybe 12 mm. and uh, five but wait 12 and five, 17 no 12 and negative five all right so you're thinking of yeah you're right on target so you're saying plus 12x minus 5x minus 60 to give us zero yes. great so we looked at the factors right there of 60 right there we have our factors to be 12 and 5 and we know that it's negative 60 and our b is 7 great so now all we need to do is simplify right so let's work it together so let's go so we're we're factorizing now so teacher one yes. question how you just write down x miss that's why me, you know let me, rub, let me rub it out let me rub it out so let's go we're factorizing factorizing yes. all right all right so now we have x squared plus 12x minus 5x minus 60 so let's factorize hmm how you think we would get it now mm. are we going to look at the first two terms are we going to look at common factors for the first two terms tell me what you want us to look at um, let's look at the x squared term and the 12x term. All right, so we're going to be factorizing those two first. So what is the highest common factor between x squared and 12x? Well, the only thing I see that they have in common is x. Great, great job. So is x. So okay. x squared now divided by x gives you what? x. Great. Plus 12x divided by 12 gives you, sorry, divided by x gives you what? 12. All right, good job. Now we're going to the second part here now to give us our minus. Well, ho, 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 ho. I give away the answer. I give away the answer. We have here 5x minus 60. What is common between these two? We're looking at common factors again. Yes, the okay. highest common factor. The highest common factor. What do you mean by factor again? Come on, man, you know it can. All right, fine. Uh, yes. All right, a number that can divide into both 5x and 60 without leaving a remainder. Thank five. you. All right, it's 5. Negative 5? All right, so we have negative 5. So now we have 5x or negative 5x divided by negative 5 gives us what? X. All right. And now we have our negative 60 divided by negative 5 leaves us with what? A positive 12. Great, great job. And all we need to do now is just put them together. So we realize that we have two x plus 12. So we're just writing back one of them. So the common factor there is x plus 12. Right. Okay. And the next one now, we realize we have x here. And we have minus 5. I remember you gave us a keyword, you know, you said solve. We have to solve for x. So now that means we have two different all right, Solutions so we have two x. factors. Great. So it's x plus 12 equals 0. And balancing our equation again, because we're solving for x, mm -hmm. we would have to subtract 12 from both sides, which leaves us with negative 12. All right. And here we have x minus 5 equals 0. So balancing our equation again, solving for x, we would add 5 to both sides, which leaves us a x minus 5 plus 5 leaves us with 0, so we arrive at x equals 5. So we have negative 12 and we have 5. 
But let me ask you a question. We're looking at direction, we're looking at distance, right? And they're asking us to tell the distance of G to H. You're telling me that we have two solutions here. X can either be negative 12 kilometers. Mom, I never hear about that. Right. Negative 12 great, kilometers. Great, great job. So I'm happy you're looking. So right here we know that for the here to find the distance for what? G to H, it cannot be negative 12. So we mm. know then without a doubt that it is 5 kilometers. Okay, I understand now. Right. So let's see. You know, no, sometimes I, I forget things, so I, I let, can, let's check I can it. close my eyes, you know, because I know I got that one lock. See? I tell you, man. Oh, You're right-ish again. You're right-ish. Tell you, man, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. And the last part of the question now, the last part of the question. All right, so the last part of the question is asking us to determine the bearing of F from G. So we're determining the bearing of F from G. All right, so right here now, going back to our original triangle here, our angle is formed right here at G. So because our angle is formed right here at G, let us now look at some properties here of our right angle triangle. So miss, we can write, we can write the, the actual measure of GH? Yes, man, we're going to do that. So let's look at it now. So GH was what we found GH to be again? Five oh. kilometers, great. So GH, the length of GH is no longer X kilometers, but five kilometers. So right here now, we're looking at... Miss, I have one more question. What's the question? If GH is five kilometers and we know that HF mm. is X plus five kilometers, what's HF? It's not X plus five, man, but you're on the right track. It's X plus seven. So X plus, X seven. plus seven, which is five plus seven, gives us what? Twelve. Twelve. Great job. So the length now of our HF here would have been 12 kilometers great so we're on the right track so we now have the length of each side of our right angle triangle and we are asked what did they ask us to find again the bearing of h the no. bearing from g so we're coming for, from f. g to f right great the, so the we bearing now of know, f from g mm -hmm, great mm -hmm. job so right here we're looking at it now hmm. so our angle is formed at G. Yes. So if our angle is right here at G, we now need to look at the side that is this this length. This little FH is what in comparison to angle G, the but angle form that G. But why are we doing that though? What type of triangle is this again? It's a right angle triangle. So with right, right angle triangle, we know that there are special properties in the right angle triangle that allows us to use some What's, what's those things called again? Trigonometric ratios, Some man. ratios, Great. right. That shows the relationship between an angle forming the right angle triangle and some side of the triangle, don't nice. it? Nice, so we can okay. find a le the length of a side or an angle based on the ratios. All right, so right. let's go now. So we know here that our opposite, so here, FH would have been what? So we know that HF is directly opposite or angle formed. So HF is opposite oh, angle. Oh, it's FH, yes. Angle G. It's opposite, yes. right? Mm -hmm. We also know that GH, which run, run, runs right alongside our angle, is adjacent right. to angle G. So GH, which is adjacent. Yes. So now, all we need to do is put them together. So we're looking at opposite and we're looking at adjacent. Which one of the trig ratios you think give us that now? Hmm, opposite and adjacent. I think I think it's the T1. What the T1 name again? Tangent. So tangent. it's tan. So it's tan theta gives us our opposite divided by our adjacent. Which gives us our opposite was what again? 12 kilometers? Yes divided by our five kilometers. So let's check if we are on the right track so far because we would have worked it out before. So we know that here to find the angle theta, it would have been tan inverse of 12 divided by five to have arrived at our bearing 67.4 degrees. degrees. Great, great job, great job. So guess what guys? We would have done so much for you so far. 
it's your turn now. You're going to get a homework to try. So look at the homework for today. So here's the homework. All right, so for homework, you're going to look at the diagram that shows the relative positions of three reservoirs, B, F, and G. All on, the, all on level ground. The distance of BF is 32 kilometers and FG is 55 kilometers. An angle is formed at BFG or an angle is formed at F which measures 103 degrees. F is on a bearing of 0, 42 degrees from B. Great. So the homework now. Go back. Go back, man. They didn't get the homework. Go back, man. Nice. Go back. They didn't get the homework. So that's the homework. The question right there. It says determine the bearings of B from F. So that's the homework that they're going to do. So let's give them 30 seconds because we're going to wrap up, you know. So let's give them 30 seconds to maybe, you know. Take them, a picture. Take, them, them take love a them picture. To picture yeah, man, thing, take you a know? picture. So let's give them 30 seconds to take the picture and then we just do the wrap up. So remember, guys, that today we were looking at bearings. Bearings, as we would have said, the 30 seconds expire. So it's our time now. Nice. All right, fine. So, so bearings now. Is an angle measured clockwise from the north direction, which we know as north, and bearing is three digits. So it's expressed in three digits. That's it for this lesson. You can watch or catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN later at 4 p.m. And in schools, not out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. It also will be on video on demand on onespotmedia.com. I'm Brittany Henderson. And I May Johnson Brown. To do Bye. Guys. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other.